Uh, I think one of the the thing that I really want to talk about, I, I think a lot of everybody knows, like in Hong Kong, Hong Kong is like a really like a West meets East kind of city where we are normally sort of leaning down to the Western side, uh, more leaning on that. But um, it, it's like, it's just like, like a norm, sort of like, like a normal practice that, that we have been doing all the time. But um, as you know, uh, in 2019, what we actually face is something is really devastating for the city. Um, we never like, like as a Hong Konger in Hong Kong, I've never, I couldn't imagine that would actually happen in Hong Kong. You know, Hong Kong used to be a place where if you are down in the MTR train station, if you bump into someone, somebody would just gonna say, oh, I'm sorry, that kind of thing. But in 2019, people are okay with people throwing petrol bombs to police officers. So the power of throwing petrol bombs to normal citizens only because their views are different to them. I think that that really strikes strike through a lot of us like what really happened all those years um in say in 2014 we have occupied central a lot of people say well it is okay because they're peaceful they're only occupying the streets they're not doing anything that is too violent and this and that but i think if you look back from now 2021 we can basically see that is like a little introduction like a little appetizer of what is actually planned in 2019 um, a lot of people saying that while well, Occupy Central and the Hong Kong riots in 2019 is something that's only motivated by the people. But, if, but, but seriously, for me, myself, is during the Occupy Central time, 2014, I actually went down. Well, well of course, I cover up my face because I don't want to be recognized <laughs> at, the, at those the, the situations. But I cover my face, I went down to the scene. Um, I see protesters everywhere. They were sitting around, not doing too much like violent things. They're just sitting around. But but one thing that I observe is the 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 sort of like foods and snacks that is actually provided to them were so properly prepared. Like the brand name of those those snacks was those like really expensive exported ones from from overseas. The the type of water and the amount of like nonstop supply of those. Contrasting to me as a district councillor at that time, I remember when there's an outbreak of the Occupy Central, I got a little phone call of the police officer who was working uh, as a PR in my constituency. He called me up and he says like, Nixie, do you know the biscuits uh, factories in your constituency? It, it's, it's a Saturday, so they, they're not opening, that we ran out of food. Like, as a police officer, we don't have any food. Is it okay for us to um, contact them and buy some little biscuits from them? So that contrast, you, you can you can basically observe how different and whether it is really motivated by the people or somebody else. Um, still in 2019, a lot of people doesn't really understand and they are saying that, well, there isn't any foreign power. Come on, it's just like, it's just the people. But we can see the wave of um, introducing the whole thing and how the Western media was trying to make the scene as in, well, they're all peaceful protesters. I remember when they first attacked, uh, before they attacked the, um, the, the legislative council complex, which is in June 2019, I was interviewed with people, the BBC, and then they were asking me, well, they are all peaceful protesters, isn't it? I was like, no, there are a bunch of really extremists within, uh, within the scene. Well, we do have, like, say, 90% of them are actually so protest, but, but and then you, you got like 10% of the very extreme extremists uh, that they, they're attacking the building and stuff. So we need to tackle that for any country that needs to keep the stability of the city. They have to do something. But then they're like, no, we're only focusing. You shouldn't focus on those people. We're only focusing on the peaceful protesters. Like, that is not right. And then I was like, later on, when, when things go down, they, they, they first of all, they, they sort of like wrap around the, the head of police station in Hong Kong, the head of police uh, uh, quarters. And then the second attempt is to uh, basically destroy the whole uh, legislative council uh, complex building. And they actually went inside and destroyed everything, destroy, uh, I talked to a lot of the legislator. Um, they're saying the computer and, and their room were, were searched. Some of the documentation were gone. Uh, some of the, like, like the, um, the internet connections and everything were, were totally destroyed. So it's not, it's not something normal, but what we only see from a lot of the Western media, they're only focusing, well, 
oh, they leave some money for the drink in the fridge so they are peaceful people. I mean, come on, look at how much, how, 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 dis- how, how much the building were destroyed. How many facade of the glasses, like outside glasses were, were destroyed. Like you, you see, you, you see they all ma- they're all messed up. They're with the helmet, they're with the bat, and they're just keeping the building. But, but nobody actually cared about anything. So the whole thing is just like really bad situation. That's why in 2020, I was actually invited representing Hong Kong to speak at the United Nations Human Rights Council to basically speak out the truth. I went there three times in March in, uh, in person, went down to Geneva and also the June and September meetings to basically tell people what exactly happened. A lot of people, when they talk about Hong Kong situation at that time, they often talk about, oh, there's police brutality and they're killing people. I mean, that's a lie. That's a big fat lie. Nobody got killed by any police officer. And what happened is the police officers were the ones that were heavily targeted, including the family members. The elder, even though like they're elderly members of the family or even though their kids were in kindergarten schools, the teachers were there having different political views were targeting those kids. They were their students. They were targeting the town and they were abusing and bullying the kids where they already what, four years old and telling them, well, you are evil because your father is a police officer. That kind of thing. And it's not only one situation, it's like multiple in every sort of level. People, we have a, we have a special word of what, what we call human search. A lot of people doesn't understand. It's when they identify you because Hong Kong is a very packed uh, community in Hong Kong. It's basically very easy to identify a person if you put the person's face online. Basically, you have like second or third tier of a person, you know. And they will search your information. They will expose you with the full ID number, your addresses, who's your relatives. They will post information online. Even my, my information were actually on one telegram over the years up until this year. I have another report to the police this year. 17 times all my information including my information of my, my husband my parents addresses everything and they were asking people to attack me they were saying that after the elections in 2019 we gonna punch up nixie and that is not something it, that is not something like uh, it's only happening to me we have um uh, uh, like uh, like politicians we're, we're under attack. My office is okay because my office is actually under a very famous um, um, uh, like a businessman's mall, so my, my office is okay. But we have multiple politicians' office were under attack. They were petrol bombed. I have a friend, his office been attacked for 11 times by petrol bombs. Can you imagine one single little office being burned down 11 times? What else would, would be left? At that time, but I mean, it's, that, I mean, a lot of people doesn't understand. They keep on saying that's police brutality, and and, and they'll say like the people, the people of Hong Kong's freedom were being suppressed. I tell you, the people's expression of, of, of freedom is being suppressed. It's like the normal, ordinary Hong Kong people. We don't dare to go out, basically, because every day we're receiving messages from WhatsApp to say, okay, stay. The protest is going to be in Causeway Bay, so nobody should go to Causeway Bay. Because it's basically, if you're there, you cannot get out. Even though you're elderly or whatever, they don't care. You just block the road, wipe all the shops. If they think it's like, the, even the banks is like the Chinese bank or whatever, and they'll just burn burn down the banks and burn down the shops and, and just do it, whatever. Um, I remember during the, uh, the National, National Day celebration, there was this guy that he was just only saying that, well, I'm Chinese and trying try to sing the national anthem because not, he's not happy why the guys were occupying the streets. He got punched up and his blood shattered all over his face. And, and, and the guys were pulling down his pants. It's like whole humiliation. But did any Western media emphasize on those incidents? No. They were keep on saying that, oh, those are peaceful protesters. They are doing the good for Hong Kong. They're human rights fighters. They're freedom fighters. They're not. So, I mean, that, that sort of thing really makes us normal Hong Kong people really angry. You know what's really angry about it? We have enacted our national security law, uh, our national security law last year, and now we have our electoral reform done. But, I mean, it's like I, I came back from Beijing from for the celebration, centennial celebration, 
I landed on the 1st of July at night at about 11. What happened is when I turn on my phone, this guy, this protester, went down behind one police officer and stabbed him. And you know what? I spoke to some, some other reporters. The, the Guardians and the BBC didn't need to even mention this incident. Do people really know that, um, that, that that sort of thing happens in Hong Kong? They're just saying rioters doing this sort of like really terror, terrorist behavior. So I think a lot of people really need to understand uh, what really happens in Hong Kong. And, uh, and I, I, mean, I mean, the CBC really trying to help Hong Kong. That's why we have and that is our national security law and the electoral reform. And basically we're trying to make sure not only Hong Kong was stabilized on the service, but was stabilized as a whole in a, in a long run. Right. I think I, my time is running out. <laughs> I spoke too much, but I, yeah, I'll pass it on to, to someone else.